Here's a look at the kit to install 2005 and newer Super Duty axles under an F-150 four-wheel drive frame. And so it includes a pair of spring buckets, radius arm brackets, a track bar bracket, and then everything else here is related to those. We have drilling templates for the radius arm brackets. We have a couple of drilling templates for the track bar bracket. We have a strap to give additional support to the track bar bracket pivot point. Um, the original transmission transfer case crossmember support brackets aren't going to be able to, to fit underneath the frame anymore. So I have these new ones that fit on top of the frame. And then hardware for all of these parts. We have parts for steering, your buckets, track bar bracket, radius arm bracket, all, all those things. So here's a closer look at the track bar bracket. The track bar bracket bolts in place of the original track bar bracket. So the, these two holes here and here. Um, the, the bolts for these are going to go through existing holes and then you need to drill two new holes for these bolts right here. And you're going to have a hard time fitting a drill in there with the track bar bracket in place. So I give you a, um, a spare one of these pieces for a drilling template. So you bolt this on the same way that you bolt on the track bar bracket. You drill these two holes. And then you'll see that the, the strap bolts to here with that same 20 millimeter bolt and it's going to meet the engine uh, cross member. And then where it meets the cross member, you drill two holes here. And then those bolts are going to need to go all the way through the cross member. And it's hard to get them good and straight. So what I do is I include this drilling template to help you get those spaced correctly. And then the radius arm brackets. These are going to require drilling several holes. They locate off of an existing hole. using You, you can see there's one slotted hole right here. The slotted hole is the locator. That, that matches up to an OEM hole. And, and besides that, the couple, couple holes here where the, where the cross member bracket goes, th those are going to line up to an existing hole. Maybe it's this side. Yeah, maybe it's that side. And then I include a spare top plate for these radius arm brackets, and that acts as your drilling template, so you can access all these holes to drill them nicely and evenly um, without messing up the power coating on these guys. And then the spring buckets, these go on to existing holes. I think you might need to drill one hole in the bottom. I can't remember on that, but hardly any drilling for the spring buckets. They bolt on there, same as an original bucket. Um, they have an integrated shock bracket. So instead of having a bucket and a shock bracket, you get one, one bracket that, that bolts up to all those locations. And then this has a, um, a three inch ring here that's welded on. And the Super Duties have a, have a spring isolator that goes there, so it's going to slip on that, same as it does on a Super Duty bucket. And then, of course, we've got hardware for the whole installation. We've got parts for the steering here for your drag link and um, hardware. And, uh, and a packing list that shows all of the parts and the hardware included. This one is the low lift four link, and uh, what makes this a low lift is that it has the, the pivot point um, for the upper tube mounted uh, beside the frame. And so the upper tube is mounted in a little bit of an S-shape, so it mounts here, and the lower tube mounts down here. And it uses these sort of rod ends. This is a Rock Crawler brand rod end. And so one of these is going to go up here. One of these is going to go right, right down here. And this works great with the, with the original used Super Duty coil spring on up to about a 2-inch lift. Here's the high lift version of my four link setup. And this is gonna have both of those pivot points mounted underneath the frame. And this works great for about a four to a six inch lift. You can use it for a two inch, but, but if you're doing two inch, you might as well use this. Um, and so same sort of tubes, same sort of rod ends. You just go right there. And all of these have, see the slotted hole? This slotted hole is always gonna be your locator on, on that original frame hole. Not shown here is my super high lift four link setup that's meant to be used with an eight and a half inch skyjacker lift spring and maybe 40 inch tires. I don't normally stock that, but that is special order. This is a 1978 F-150 four wheel drive. And here's a look at this conversion kit installed without drilling a single hole. And so all of the missing bolts you're gonna see are the, the bolt holes you need to drill. So first let's look at our radius arm brackets. And, and here we have four link, it's gonna be for installation, the, the same exact sort of thing. And so right right here, you're gonna have a have a factory drilled hole. Here's a look on the other side. So right here, and, and just to help you, you figure out where exactly that is, here's a tape measure. 
You can see if we measure from the, the back of that cab mount to the center of our bolt hole, we're gonna wind up at 11 and a half inches. And so 11 and a half inches, that's where you'd hold that drilling template right here. And then you drill out three holes here and then two holes down below. So, so see how there's two existing holes? That's for that cross member support piece. And then you're gonna drill out one more hole right here with that template. And then your either your radius arm bracket or your four link bolts on right there. And uh, you can't see it here, but th this hole in my new bracket is slotted. The slotted hole is the locator, that 11 and a half inch mark. We can take a look at those same supports on a different frame. And here you'll see they uh, share the same holes as the radius arm brackets, and they mount to your existing cross member, and then another view from the other side. If you don't use four link, you wind up with a radius arm bracket and a used radius arm that look like this. And here's a look at that smaller radius arm bracket. So you see this is a this is an original use Super Duty radius arm. And it would just sit right down here. And pivot from roughly right about there, and it would sit a little bit more level with the ground than these radius arm than these four link brackets. The spring bucket's a breeze. This is gonna bolt in with, with existing bolt holes. And uh, it's hard to see it, but the, there actually are existing bolt holes back here. And um, those those go through. They're shared with the, the engine purchase right there. Track bar bracket has two holes that it shares with uh, the, the original track bar bracket. And then you're gonna use a couple drilling templates one drilling template is, is over here. So before you put the track bar bracket in, this piece is gonna bolt to the frame right here. And you're gonna drill those two holes out from the bottom. And then you bolt your track bar bracket on. This strap is gonna go on the forward side of the track bar bracket. And here's a better look at it over here. The strap goes up here to your, your cross member. And then what you'll do, you're gonna drill these two holes, half inch drill bit. It's gonna go through your cross member. It's a little hard to locate your forward holes, and especially if you're pushing a drill bit all the way through, you're gonna wind up with them somewhere funny. So what you do is use this drilling template, and this is gonna keep your bolt holes even and square. You'll line this up over here. It's gonna wind you some, something like this, give or take right here. And then that's gonna help you drill, locate those two right there, drill them nicely. And then what you do is you just put a couple bolts in here so it holds it steady, so you're not you're not eyeballing it. And then your track bar bracket bolts in, use, use half inch by six inch bolts to go through here. And then the steering for the, the later model trucks, I believe 76 or 79, they have a steering box like this. You're gonna have a, a frontward pointed pitman arm and um, I believe the earlier ones had a rearward pointing pitman arm, and you can see where that would interfere with your track bar bracket. So for those, you're likely gonna need to replace the engine cross member. So what, what you do is you, you get a piece of DOM tube and um, you connect the dots. And so I, I know this is just sitting here. It's not in place. This is just loose. Um, you, you, there, there's a There's a, weld on end that goes on a piece of DOM tube for the included tie rod end. And then there's a similar weld on piece. You can see it's not welded, it's just sitting there right now. That goes on the Super Duty tie rod end. And so what you do is you buy a four foot piece of DOM tube and you cut it down to length. And that's it for using your original steering box. To go to a, a Super Duty steering box, you need to replace your engine cross member so instead of being positioned so far forward, it's gonna, it's gonna come back approximately to the, the spring bucket area. And here's the solution I've come up with. It, it's a formed, oh, about a, about a four piece setup. So there, there, there's one piece that goes there. We have a second form piece. That's the main cross member portion. And then, um, and then welding pieces that go on the right and left side. And then here's the driver's side that accommodates a spring bucket. Sorry. Yeah a um, steering box. And the way this works is there's drilling templates that go on either side. So here's the passenger side, for example. You'll notice that this bolt pattern looks just like that bolt pattern right there, if you can see it. 
And so you'd remove your spring bucket, you'd put this in there, you'd, you'd uh, drill the holes out. I, I think this hole right here is gonna wind up with, with, with this hole, give or take. And, uh, and then you, you drill out the holes that don't, um, the, 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 the drilling template shows you to drill out. You cut out the area immediately behind that. You know, it slips in the frame. This was part of the frame right here. And then these new pieces would would bolt in. And so you start by bolting them, and then you weld them in. And so you, with the templates, you're able to entirely bolt these in first. You don't have to worry about measuring or locating. You bolt them in. You weld it, and then you, you just leave this a bolt in, so the, the cross member itself can be unbolted at a later date. Might as well have it be removable. Same thing on the other side, just with a larger piece, because that, that steering box goes right there. You get a bigger drilling template for over on that side, and it's gonna put your Super Duty steering box right about there, with the arm pointed forward like this. And so that cross member is right in the way, moving it back to here, we'll solve that. This truck here is not an F-150, it's an F-250 four-wheel drive low void that's been converted to 2005 Super Duty axles. However, the F-150 kit is heavily based on this kit I made for the F-250 pickup trucks. And so we use our same CAD model to create the F-150 kit, so I can expect similar results for this. And this truck shown here has originally used Super Duty coil springs, 33-inch tires, um, here it's shown with 37 inch tires and a 4 inch lift and and this is the high lift 4 link in this, this second video here. So this is representative of what to expect and soon I'll be coming out with pictures and videos of actual converted F-150 four wheel drive pickup trucks.